We're glad you're here today. Uh, it's nice to be here. We'll ask you if you're in the house. If you, uh, there's nobody watching from outside the house, so, so uh, if you're here, if you'd register your attendance and pass that down. Appreciate your uh, accommodating the changes this morning. We, we wanted to have church. We were debating, do we do it outside? Do we do it inside? Uh, honestly, I didn't think you could open the windows, and I didn't. And Mr. Paul said, yeah, you can, you can open the windows. So I appreciate that. Uh, we've had them open and got all the doors open, trying to keep things cool. Uh, we're going to try and keep this a, a little shorter than normal. So, uh, but just uh, power projections right now for for around here have power coming back on October the fifth, uh, which is Saturday. And so, uh, right now, no, no events this week. Uh, office probably is not going to be open this week because we <laughs> we can't use the computers or anything else. Uh, but but we are, are available. If you need anything, please let us know. Uh, currently, uh, all the normal programming is on hold. No youth tonight. No Club 55. N none of that. Uh, I do want to let you know I, I'm, I am going to be starting, when we do start back Wednesday night, a six-week, basically adult confirmation class in the place of my Bible study. And it, it's going to share with you the things we share with the kids, show you what we do with them during confirmation. But at the same time, it's going to share a little more Methodist stuff, some of our nuances, answer some of your questions. So if you, if you can, we'd love to have you join us uh, when we start back the, the Wednesday night Bible study after supper uh, in the place of the Genesis study, which we finished. There is a, Tom's got instructions in the bulletin again for you to be able to, to access the pictorial directory. Hope you'll take advantage of that. And before you forget to do it like I've done, it's on my computer, but it's not on my phone. So I've got to remember to do that. Next Sunday, we're supposed to have children Sunday. If there's power, that's the plan. Uh, that they, they, but we'll, we'll, we'll go from that. So glad you're here. Good morning. good morning. It's so good to see all of you and I'm glad everybody's safe. And it's just a blessing to see your faces today. Thank you for being here. We're going to stand and sing hymn number 57. You get to use those blue books that we marked out the word United out of all of them. Uh, page 57, the first four verses only of 4,000 tongues to sing. Would you stand please? Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of our God and King, the triumphs of His grace. My gracious Master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of Thy name. Thus the name that charms our fears, that bids our sorrows cease. Tis music in the sinner's ears, his life and health and peace. He breaks the power of canceled sin, he sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean, his blood availed for me. Remain standing, please, for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end amen amen y'all turn and greet those around you
family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. And you may be seated. Thank you. We come up to our prayer time and celebrations and concerns. We want to celebrate Mary Virginia and Will Coran had a little baby boy yesterday morning. And so just we want to be celebrating that. Don't know a name yet, but, but just uh, every, uh, Miss Julie said everything's good. And, and so just, just continue to be lifting them up. Want to remember, of course, all those affected by, by the weather and, and all the, the different things that have happened in different places. Uh, lots of folks uh, hurting. Uh, lots of folks lost everything. Uh, Joseph and Rebecca Carter be lifting them up. They had three house, three trees that basically split the, the parsonage, and uh, they, they found a little place. And, and uh, you know they're they're just trying to work through some stuff at this point. But be lifting them up. Uh, Pat Atwater was scheduled to have his surgery on Tuesday. Not sure if that's going to happen. I, you know, I, I, I think they're probably okay down there, but I don't know as far as the ability to, to get there and all that. So just be lifting them up. Uh, I want to continue to be remembering all those on our list. Uh, did I mention Laverne Putnam? She just got out of uh, hip surgery. They put three pins in. She fell and broke her hip, and they had to, to wait a, a day or two to, to let her, her blood thinner levels get get back where her clock factor was good enough they could do it but uh, just be be lifting her up other celebrations concerns let's pray gracious god we thank you god for for your protection lord we thank you for your provision we thank you for this family of god that we sing about and neighbors and friends that are part of that family but may not be part of this church that just how we act like a, a family and come together when, when, when things are bad. We just thank you, Lord, for, for the gift of human compassion. We pray that you give us more of it. We thank you for the gift of your peace. Even in the midst of the storm and when we're still anxious, we, there, we know that we've got something that we don't have to be afraid of. Father, we thank you for all those that have answered your call to, to serve and protect and those that have been working throughout this storm to, to continue to do that. We, we thank you for all those that have responded, those that were staged and ready to come in and have been working all day long, uh, putting in so much hard work to, get, to try and get our lives back to normal. Lord, we know that there are people all across the southeast that, that are affected this way, and we just ask that you would just continue to keep that hedge of protection about them, keep them safe. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we can come into this place today to, to worship you, and we pray that you just bless this time, that you use it for your glory. We ask all these things in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The ushers will come for the offering. Oh, okay, y'all cut one. Okay. okay. All right. You remain seated. We're going to be singing Amazing Grace, hymn number 378, verses 1, 2, 3, and 6. Here we go. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, the saved a wretch like me. Oh, 
grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed through many dangers toils and snares I have already come his grace hath brought be saved thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days sing God's praise than when we first begun. And all God's people said, oh, Amen. Glory. Doxology, huh? I'm sorry. Praise, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. You may be seated. If you got your Bible, you can turn to Job. Uh, go to Psalms and go back towards the front, one book. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1, starting in verse 6. One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from roaming through the earth and going back and forth in it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied, have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You bless the work of his hands so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But stretch out your hand and strike everything he has and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well then, everything he has is in your hands, but on the man himself do not lay a finger. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. On the day when Job's son, one day when Job's sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby, and the Sabaeans attacked and carried them off. They put the servants to the sword, and I'm the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The fire of God fell from the sky and burned up the sheep and the servants, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The Chaldean formed three raiding parties and swept down on your camels and carried them off. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, yet another messenger came and said, Your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house. When suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house, it collapsed on them and they are dead. And I'm the only one who's escaped to tell you. At this, Job got up, tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground and worshiped and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. And all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for this time. I pray that you get me out of the way, that you speak your message to us in this place, that you bless this time and use it for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. We've been talking about miracles as we've gone over the last few weeks. And um, 
you know, some of us can testify God is still in the miracle business. Uh, some have had near misses. Some took hits and are here. Uh, one of the realities is we all carry around bad theology. We all carry around this teaching that, that, that we've been taught, that we've heard, that, that people have said, and, and we, it becomes part of our theology, and we just carry it around with us. And, and it's, it's crazy. Some of it says if, you're, if you have something happen to you, if you get sick, if you, if you have cancer, it's because there's sin in your life. I've known preachers who preach that, and it's like they preached that until their mama got cancer, and then all of a sudden they changed their tail. But, but, but I mean, people have that kind of thing, and we've heard some of us have been exposed to that preaching, that teaching, that if there's any misfortune, if there's any problem, it's because there's sin. Show me that in the Bible. How many of the disciples suffered horrible fates? Died martyrs, but they were living their faith. Well, they, we, you know, it, it, doesn't, it all doesn't mesh up when you really look at it in Scripture and try and, and make sense to that with that bad theology. There are questions, things we struggle with. Some of mine, we've been talking about healing. Why did Jesus heal some people and not others? Now, we don't know what that, that he, but one passage says he, he, he healed all. But in John chapter 5, there's a story of the man at the pool at Bethesda. And if you remember that story, Jesus goes and he asks him, why didn't, why didn't you, you know, why are you here, basically? And the guy says, well, you know, when the water stirred, I can't get there fast enough, somebody else gets in. And they believed that an angel would come down and stir the waters, and the first person in after the, that, that angel stirred that would be healed. And Jesus looked at him and said, take up your mat and go home. And he did. But we don't read about Jesus healing another person there. And, and all of the people that were sick that were hoping for that healing miracle would gather there. So we don't know what happened at that point. But it's interesting, Paul, Paul did incredible things. Remember the time Paul's preaching and, and, the, and the kid falls asleep in the window and falls out on the ground dead? And Paul goes out and, 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 and raises him? Paul cast out demons, all kind of things. Paul, Paul would pray over aprons and, and they would send them over handkerchiefs and they would take them to other people that were sick and the people would be healed. But Paul says he had this thorn in his flesh. He kept asking God to remove from him and, and, and he wouldn't. I know others that have had seemingly the gift of healing. They would pray for people and, and, and miraculous things would happen. But so many of them, if you, if you look at the history of, of those people in, in, in our lifetime that have had that kind of a gift, they've suffered from cancer. They, their loved ones have, have, have had some kind of illness and they haven't been able to, 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 to heal them. Why some get healed and not others? Now, I do not understand all the ways God delivers us. But I love the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When all of a sudden, you know, everybody's supposed to bow down to, to this, this idol that, that Nebuchadnezzar's built. And they refuse and furious with rage in, in Daniel chapter 3, starting in verse 13, says, Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I've set up? Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes and all kinds of music, if you're ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you'll be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we're thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you've set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. 
So these men wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, O king. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the God. Different people see things different ways. I, I, I love um, one of the teacher's um, takes on this passage, uh, Beth Moore in, in her Daniel series. And she says that, she, she talks about how God, we go through storms, we go through fires, we go through illness, we go through those things. But, but with that perspective, like they said, God may deliver us from having to go through the fire. We may never experience that. Some people went through this um, without losing power, without losing a, a, a tree limb, without losing anything. They, they had a little, a little brush on the ground, but that was about it. Um, some people God carries through the fire, through the storm, through the illness. And sometimes God may even use that fire, that storm, that illness to deliver us unto him. But we're with him. We have troubles, we have tribulations, we have them in this flesh. But the writer of Hebrews reminds us, God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Jesus said, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. As we go through the storms in our life, God's going to do something in the midst of it. We've got to look. We can see his hand at work with people who, who, who have, have showed up asking for help, people who've done all kinds of things. There's always that opportunity to come alongside and help somebody else. In these days ahead, that's something we need to look at uh, and how, how we, we can better minister to those that are suffering. Uh, one of the real impacts with, with the breakup of the UMC in South Georgia is our crisis response teams, our, our, our relief teams. I mean, they're not calling asking, can we help you? They're, 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 not, they're not doing that. And so if, if a church is left, uh, no matter how long they've been a part of them, they, they, unfortunately, they, they, they don't seem to be doing that. Um, I say that. They've done that in the past in, in some churches. In other churches, they haven't. There's, we haven't found the rhyme or reason. But with that, we need to be looking and seeing how we can help. Uh, thank you all for being here today. If there's something you need, uh, please let us know. Altar's open. We've got another hymn? Yes. Okay, we've got one more hymn. I invite you to come. Uh, thank you all for being here. Just wanted to, to have some sense of normalcy. And with God carrying us through this, we wanted to praise God and thank you. Our closing hymn is hymn number 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Would you stand please? compassions they fail not as thou hast been thou forever wilt be great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I
mercy and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see. Peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand besides. Great is thy faithfulness. Great faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness Lord unto me I want to thank Pat, Trevor, and Wes for pulling everything together to, to make this happen Help folks who, who, who you know who watch the stream understand we didn't have electricity. We are recording it. Wes is, is recording it on camcorder. We had some my wireless mic going to that and, and recording some of it. And uh, going to try and post that later. So so hopefully that will be out there for them. Thank y'all for being here. Y'all stay safe. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face shine upon you. Gracious to you. Lord turn his face. Thank you.